Hi, Tom. Hello. Um, so I read something that you'd posted. I can't remember the man's name. He had a, an unusual word for realization, like man, mananosa or something like that. Um, mananosa. And, mananosa. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I kind of, so I contemplated on that a bit. And I, I also, I remember that uh, several times you said that um, if you really want realization, that that you'd already be realized. If if you're not realized, then there's you know that you don't really want it. There's something standing in the way. And um, so those two things together, I, I kind of I could see this 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 massive fear. <laughs> <laughs> um, that is um, about a, a being alone because if there are no others, then and and there's oneness, then there's only one. There are no others. That means you're alone, and that that actually terrifies me. It's, it's like a really big fear. And ever since then, I felt really quite. Um, triggered you know like when when something's come up and you've got triggered and there's this sort of inside there's this kind of uncomfortable feeling that you have to sort of sit with and that's sort of it's like a grumbling away there it's not like acute <laughs> but it's like um so what, what are you supposed to do about that <laughs> yeah it's a great question it's a great <laughs> question yeah Mana nasa, if that wasn't bad enough, mana nasa literally means destruction of the mind. Mana means mind. Manas means mind. Mana comes from manas. And nasa or nasha means destruction. Mana nasa, mana nasha. Different pronunciations. Um, so destruction of the mind. If the, most people don't like that either. <laughs> I'm not I mean, you don't, you don't like to be alone. Most people yeah. don't like the idea of their mind being destroyed, you know. And then, what? And what about in the opening verses? That I think the the ones that I wrote that Demetrius read, when we talk about being consumed. Who wants to be consumed? Anyone fancy being consumed today? You know, eaten. To be consumed means to be eaten. You know? So again, it's destruction. But wait a sec, we can make it sound nicer. Consumed by God. Consumed by God. You see? Sounds a bit nicer now. It's more palatable. Palatable is another food metaphor, isn't it? <laughs> It sounds better if you're consumed by God, right? Now, there are all these different words for liberation. Samadhi, moksha, nirvana, mananasa. Yeah. Have you heard, Arwen, have you heard of the one <laughs> Kaivalya? Have you heard of Kaivalya? Mm -hmm. Kaivalya, K-A-I-V-A-L-Y-A -A -A in English or in Roman script. Kaivalya means alone. Oh. <laughs> so good job you didn't hear of that one. Um, you know, good job that wasn't the first one you came across. You know. well, Liberation sounds much better, doesn't it? Yeah. Freedom. But the, but the words alone, if you split the words alone, all one. It doesn't work with Kaivalya, though. It doesn't <laughs> work with Kaivalya. <laughs> But you're right, you see, oneness does oneness sounds lovely. I think most people, if you say oneness, that sounds nice. People like, oh, oneness, I like that. But if you say aloneness, oh, that doesn't sound so good. If you say con you're going to be consumed, that doesn't sound so good. But if you can say consumed in, by God, I don't know, maybe that sounds better. But how about this then, Arwen? Alone with God. But that's two again. It is two. 
So that's not the same thing. <laughs> it is though. I mean, but you're right. It's two, but it's the same thing. You'll be alone with God. You'll be alone with Bhagavan. Now, when when there's fear, what is it that's afraid? Is it God that's afraid? Is it the self that's afraid? Is it the innermost part of you that is Bhagavan, that is God, that is divine, that is the self that is afraid? Or is it the ego that's afraid? Yeah, it's always the ego. Or is, is it just that the fear, the fear is afraid? <laughs> no, the fear is the ego. The ego is the fear. The ego lives on fear. Because the ego thinks it's, it's real, it's afraid to disappear. And similarly, because the ego thinks it's a person, for example, the ego thinks it's Tom, then Tom is afraid to be alone. But this is not what it is. This is not what Kaivalya is. This is not what liberation is. It's not Tom being all alone. It's not Tom being on a desert island. It's not Arwen being alone. It's not Arwen having to fend for herself. Because that's, what, what, that's why being alone is so scary. You know, in days gone by, one of the punishments that one that society might inflict on you is banishment from the tribe, exile. Mm. Why is that such a punishment, Arwen? Why is that such a punishment? Yeah, yeah. I was thinking about this because it, it's biological conditioning. If you, if you're alone, you're vulnerable. You're not likely to survive. Yeah, that's so, why we're that, afraid. That, that's what it triggers in me. This this vulnerability. Exactly. That's it. You're afraid of what? Of Arwen being alone. Who's going to help you? Who's going to look after you? How are you going to survive? How are you going to break the elements? Yeah? Hmm. But what if you're going to be alone and you would have everything you ever needed? And you would be happy beyond your wildest dreams. You would be given everything you ever needed. And you'll feel totally fulfilled and happy. Because my mind's still going, who, who's going to love me? And that, 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 that's what others do in, in my mind. Yeah. So that, that's looking for love outside of yourself, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it points to a, a low self-concept, low self-esteem. You don't mind me saying. <laughs> Most people have this, right? Most most of us will have this. So we we need the affirmation, recognition, and love of someone else. But when we start to feel that we are divine, that we are worthy, that we are full, that we are precious, that we are wonderful, you start to feel that more and more through Bhagwan's presence in you, rising up. He lifts you up. The whole point of this teaching, we might point out things like low self-esteem, low self-worth, low self-concept. But the idea is to lift you up, to make you feel whole and good in yourself. And as you feel good in yourself as an ego, as an individual, you can start to let go of negativity. And let go and abide as self. So these are things for you to look at and examine yourself on if these things are coming up. Why are you afraid of being alone? Write down the reasons. Don't just think about it in your head. It become overwhelming. Write down if you haven't already. Write down, oh, I'm afraid because of this. I'm afraid because of this. I'm afraid because of this. I'm afraid because of that. I won't be loved. Who else will be around me? Who will I talk to? You know, whatever it is for you. Write these things out. Understand where this conditioning, this fearful conditioning is coming from. Use yeah. affirmations to, to, res to resolve these things. Tell yourself, I am lovable. I am wonderful. I am beautiful. I am amazing. I am divine. I am Bhagwan. I am God. I am holy. I am worthy. I am wonderful. I am amazing. I am awesome. Whatever it is, say these things to yourself. Convince yourself of this truth, because it is true. You are all of those things, Arwen, and much more. You're wonderful. You're divine. You are beautiful. You are amazing. You are excellent. You excel. See, 
in in the pandemic when I was part of this little local very, very small self inquiry group of three people um it's that what I learned then was um you know I'd, oh, I I don't know quite how it happened but I had quite a deep self-loathing complex by the time I was you know quite young really and um I I the nature of my mind was that I I tormented myself with with self-hatred through my teens through my 20s um and, and beyond and even then I, I even realized in the sort of spiritual practice in in this little group it was almost like there was something there that I was um, using spiritual practice to, to, to the punishment in a, in a small way still. Um, and then I kind of, I let, I let go of that and, um, you know, became loving towards myself, which was tremendous, tremendous help. But I suppose, you know, some of these patterns are so deep and you might have seen like part of the pattern, but a, a deeper level, then can come up later and still yes, need resolving that's that. It. So that's maybe it. that's what this is. That's what it is. You've come a long, long way on. You know this. You see this in yourself. You, you're doing wonderfully well on this path. And that's going to continue. And that's right. You solve an issue. Like say, say maybe you recognize an issue, whatever it is. Maybe you recognize you've got low self-esteem. And then you solve that issue. And then, it, and then sometime later, it comes back again. And you think, oh, I thought I'd already dealt with this. Yeah. But you haven't. It's just a deeper layer of it comes up again. And then you have to deal with that. It's very rarely a one time fix, these things. You have to do it again and again and again. So and that that's okay. Like... That's normal. That's going to be, that's the journey. So I, I remember hearing, um, she called Shakti Katarina Maggie. She said that you have to meet all the waves. So when when all this stuff comes up and you sit with it, is that like meeting all the waves? You don't have to meet all the waves. <laughs> I don't know what, no. you know what. But but most of us will have to meet the big waves, you know, the ones that knock us off course, because they will keep on knocking you off course, of course, until you can ignore them or deal with them. You don't have to meet all the waves. This is why you never see in Bhagwan's teachings. You have to meet all the waves. You've got to be with all the thoughts. You never see that. He's always encouraging you to turn away. Because it would be endless if you tried to meet everything. Yes. You'd never try just just like the passage that Walter read to us. You know, we cannot stop the shimmering or the shaking of the shadow on the water, the thoughts. This so is it's endless, but the big ones that are, have been maybe deeply deeper more deeply conditioned into us these throw us of course when they come into us they overwhelm us they seem to submerge us under the water and so we've got to deal with these just enough so we can then get on with our spiritual practice so if, if there was like a giant wave but it it you could ignore it you wouldn't have to meet it it wouldn't matter because you'd be exactly. focused on the staff yes. right and do you know what you know those giant waves that you can ignore do you know what they're called they're called small waves. <laughs> because the reason I say that is because, in a way, the, what, the way we define giant, it's, a, it's like a tautology. The way we define giant are the ones that we can't ignore. The ones you can yeah. ignore, they're the small ones. So, what might be giant for one person might be small for another, or vice versa, you see. But for example, say you're getting triggered by the word kaivalya or oneness or aloneness. And then every time you read that or think about it, it makes you shudder. And then you recoil from the teaching out of fear. Then you maybe have to look into that and deal with that. Well, you do have to look into it and deal with it. Because otherwise think, you can't engage. It's, stop, it's preventing you from engaging with the teaching. I think it was the thought that I, I could sit here in satsang talking to you and I'm, I'm talking to myself and probably I don't believe that I've got the answers. So yeah, that would point to low self-esteem, wouldn't it? See, this is why I said guru is the most important thing. If you connect with Bhagavan and you have that sense that he is with you and he is you. And to put it the other way around, you are he. 
to realize in a deep way this connection with Guru, this connection with Bhagavan Ramana, this is actually on the deepest level you realize that he is you, you are he. So you can truthfully say, I am Bhagavan, I am Guru, I am Ramana, he comes from me or he is within me, he is my essence, he is my core. Now, what more of a positive self-concept can you have than this? But on, a, on an intellectual level, that's impossible to believe intellectually. This is what I'm saying. If you have a connection, that connection yeah, is, not, is not intellectual. Yeah. That means there's a part of you that knows. Whether you intellectually believe it or not, there's a deeper part of you knows, I am divine. And that inner knowing, even if it's just a tiny glimpse, a tiny shimmer that's shining through the cracks of the ego, that is unshakable. You cannot lose that. You can never lose that. There's, and we all have this. We all have this deep inner knowing that we are one. We are divine. We are the self. We're the ultimate. We're the supreme. This is what I mean by connection with Guru. So, so that, another way of saying that is like tuning in to that. Yes. That, that's like, However you want to yeah. say yes. Another way of saying it is somehow inwardly knowing that you are amazing. Some sense of inner knowing that you are beautiful. Or I'll use the word I now. Instead of saying you, I'll use I. Some deep inner knowing, I am wonderful. I am amazing. I am holy. I am spirit. I am divine. I am the blessing. I am blessed. I am immense beauty, spirit. This is me. I am that. Owen and everyone, if you have that sense, if you have that part of you that has that sense, then connect with it. If you don't have that sense, quieten down and see if you can start to intuit that through intuition, not through the mind through your heart. Now, if someone's very intellectual, they say, what do you mean? What's the heart? I can't tell you. To understand what I mean by the heart, you have to open your heart to understand that. The clue is feeling. Feelings in the body is a clue. So, Owen, do you have some kind of sense of that? Yes. Yeah. yeah. All the positive self-worth, all the positive self-concept can come from that. Not because you think Arwen's oh, so cool and so special and so amazing. It's not about that. It's a deeper knowing than that. It's like Arwen is who she is. Yeah. She's got some good qualities and she's got some bad qualities. That's the same for every body mind. Some body minds will have more good qualities than bad. And some body minds will have more bad qualities than good. There's a whole spectrum. It doesn't matter. That's irrelevant to this. Yeah. But what this is beyond the body mind, there's some deeper knowing. If you need to latch on to good qualities of the body mind to help you feel more positive about yourself, then do that. You know, then do that. That's more superficial. But if it's helping you, then do that. But eventually we come to this deeper knowing of what we truly are. This is the beginning and end of true self-esteem true self-worth, which ends in realization. If these other things are getting in the way, like these words alone are freaking you out, then either come back to Bhagavan and realize that you're safe and this freedom is not something he'll be sharing with you if it put you in any harm or any danger. It's only positive. Realize that the fear is the ego projecting the body-mind being alone. And the fears related to the body mind being alone, not the true meaning of Kaivalya, which is oneness and wholeness and fullness and bliss and ecstasy, heaven on earth. You see? If you can't get past it, then you can do some reflection, start thinking and analyzing the, the, the conditioning to help you.
if you still can't get past it, then ignore the word aloneness. Try not to think about it. Think about your spiritual path using words and terms and terminology that help you and don't hinder you. Ignore the aloneness, Kavalya, what or stuff. And find a word that you like and, and use that instead. And ignore all the other stuff for now. Find something that helps you. The words don't matter so much. What can be helpful verbally to one person can be a hindrance to somebody else. Okay, here's some guidelines I've given you now. Thank you. Does that help you? Yeah, that, that helps a lot. Thank you. You're welcome. 